Hello everybody. Wow, life has just been life in a way over here. There is a lot that I can't share with you. Yeah. <laughs> Lots that I can't share with you. Uh, for those of you who were on my workshop April 22nd, the one that I had been talking about, you know that we did have like significant things happening with our family. Didn't get too much into detail, but just kind of was sharing that we were going through a lot. Definitely can't share it here. Yeah, just life is life -ing. Same with all of you. Like we're constantly just navigating through life and doing the best that we can. But um, also, John and I were able to go on an incredible international vacation and I want to share with you guys what the vacation was like and also talk about what it looks like to travel when you have kids placed with you. What is respite? What is our opinion of respite? Because we don't like respite. I totally understand. Let me like caveat. Respite is needed. Respite is absolutely needed for those breaks for caregivers, um, especially with kids with higher needs, um, behavioral, medical. Yes, respite is needed for you to take a breath and then step back into being a caregiver for that child. When I say that I don't like respite, I'll explain why. So let me start by talking about this vacation. John and I have been looking forward to this for a really long time. We spent a week in Costa Rica. Oh my gosh, it was an absolutely beautiful place. And we would have never thought to travel there, but John has a friend of his who built a house there and they graciously opened up their home to a, a big group of friends. And so not only were we in this beautiful place, but we were with beautiful, kind people. And if you've ever traveled with like groups of people and like the logistics of all of it, like. It wasn't without challenges, let's say. <laughs> when you're traveling with other people, there's gonna be things that come up. But at the same time, like, holy crap, it was incredible. So we had like private dinners cooked for us. He treated us to this, oh my gosh, this restaurant that was like the fanciest, most amazing place I have ever eaten at. I think arguably like there was one time that John and I went to a steakhouse that was like, when we got the bill, I was like, excuse me, <laughs> people eat like this all the time. Oh my God. But no, like this place was the fanciest of food. Like I was looking at the menu. I'm like, I don't know what any of this says. Close my eyes and pick something. Um, open, open walls. Like, so the restaurant was like open. You take your shoes off. You sit at this big family sized table. Oh my gosh. That was incredible. Food all week, absolutely incredible. Was able to be with like my best friend, which is like incredible to spend all this time with like people that you love, um, waking up every morning and just putting on my bathing suit, taking my book down to the pool, relaxing until everyone was waking up. Got to go to an animal sanctuary. Oh, the, um, what is it called? Diamante Adventure Park. Um, they had this animal sanctuary. They had different excursions you could go on. My friend went on the zip lining um, for John and I. I don't know why I just really wanted to go horseback riding. And I haven't done it since I was a kid. And so I don't remember what it was like, but horses are just so majestic and it was terrifying. Honestly, once I got up on that horse, I was more scared of the horse than probably the zip lining to be fair. But we uh, did horseback riding down to the beach and in Costa Rica, like I've only known beaches that are like beaches and Costa Rica is like, you're on a beach, there's rocks everywhere and then there's mountains. So you get the mountain landscape with the beach Ugh. and everything is pure vida there. Like we got to go into town. Uh, we got a catamaran boat uh, trip. So I'm going to put a few little video clips here so you guys can kind of see some of the things that we did. Thank you. 
gosh, so incredible. We also came back home to our house being perfectly cleaned because we used an amazing cleaning service. So we had scheduled before the trip to have a local cleaner come out through Home Aglow and clean our home while we were away because we knew like we had a lot of prep work. Our family had been going through some things. I didn't have time to clean the house. And coming back from vacation and being rested, rejuvenated, and then coming back to a messy home was like not, I was not interested in it. So we definitely treated ourselves if, as a caregiver, like there are certain services that can really support you. And as a foster caregiver, like you are licensed to care for children. You are trauma informed. If, if you're able to, and, and this is something that we prioritize, if I can spend more time with a child and be there for them versus cleaning, absolutely. Like that is my gift. My gift is to be able to be a foster caregiver. And if I can free up the finances to be able to have this service like once a month and I know the house is gonna be cleaned, definitely consider it. I know it feels like a luxury. Back when we started uh, doing this, it, it definitely felt like, oh my gosh, like having somebody come in and clean, like that's such a luxury and it is, but it is a luxury that ugh, I'm telling you is worth it. So this video is sponsored by Home Aglow. They are a five-star home cleaning service with affordable prices. The online booking capabilities allow you to instantly schedule a cleaner in your area for a special occasion, party, or just regular maintenance. And as a foster caregiver, that time is valuable. It's also a great way to support local cleaners in your area. 100% of the cleaning fees and tips go directly to the cleaner. To schedule a cleaning, you simply go to the website, choose the day and time you're looking for, the duration of your cleaning, and you'll see all the available cleaners. You can browse photos and reviews of background checked cleaners before choosing the right cleaner for you. You can also sign up for their Forever Clean membership, and this saves you $30 an hour on all your future cleanings. So take home cleaning off your plate by using Home Aglow. Go Go to homeaglow.com slash be the village to get your first cleaning for just $9. So it was such a relief to come home from this vacation and have the house completely clean and just get back into transitioning back into the real world after vacation. And now let's back up. Let's talk about respite and what it is. So for us, when we said yes to a placement call and we knew that this vacation was on our calendar, we were very explicit. We communicated with our caseworker that we can say yes or we wanna say no because of this reason. And typically if we do have a vacation planned, we will put ourselves on hold and this is why, because I don't like using respite for this purpose. Respite can be used if the kid needs a break from you or if you need a break from the kid, if you need a break from caregiving, it, it's this idea that you can get support if you are starting to feel overwhelmed or stressed out. Like, I feel like we've all experienced that. I mean, with our kids, there are days where it's like, go to grandma's because <laughs> I need a break. I need a break because I'm starting to lose my patience. My, my stress levels are increasing. I'm not taking care of myself. Um, maybe you notice that you're practicing some unhealthy coping mechanisms and you just need to reset. It's the same as a foster caregiver. But what I don't like is having a vacation planned, having to use respite because we, we have something that is not movable. And of course it's gonna happen. Like it's gonna happen. It's just my personal preference is I don't want to have a child placed with us we're a stranger, they get used to us, and then we're having to then say, oh, we're gonna be gone for this period of time, go to this other stranger. It doesn't feel good for me. But honestly, uh, for this, that can end up being the case. And here's ways to minimize the ickiness of using respite in this way. So number one, have alternative caregivers that you know, so your family and friends. This is family and friends that the kids placed with you um, are probably gonna get to know anyway. They're gonna come over for dinner, they might you know, visit, and um, yes, they're still a stranger, but they're, they're getting used to them. So it's not a complete stranger, if you follow me. Also, check with the caseworker to see if there are family and kinship for the children. So do they have a grandma? Do they have an aunt or uncle? Do they have a neighbor that they're close with um, who can get certified as a respite provider, as an alternative caregiver? This is entirely possible. So explore those options of kinship and can they go stay with family that they already know during the time um, that you are going to be away? So I would say, number one, try to avoid using respite. Don't say yes to a child if you're gonna end up like needing to put them in a stranger home. Again, that's just my opinion, but 
that's what I'm here for is to share my opinion. Number two, I would say find out if you can set up their existing family or friends to be that respite provider because it's a relationship they already have. Number three, I would say, you know, get an alternative caregiver set up in your family so that they, the child can get used to them, get comfortable with them. And that way it doesn't feel like once again, I'm going into a stranger's home. And the fourth option, if you do have to use another foster caregiver, somebody who the children or child, they don't know, create a transition to, to help them feel comfortable. Um, make it as trauma-free as you possibly can. And for us, like when we are using respite throughout our, our journey, we've used it, I would say a couple of times, I will absolutely make sure there is a phone call that the child knows, like here's a picture of them, if not um, meeting them in person, having a conversation. If I don't get a good feeling about that caregiver, I will shut it down. <laughs> and I have before, and you guys know this from Miss A, there was a caregiver who was gonna force her to go to um, a religious uh, ceremony and she didn't wanna go and she was old enough and mature enough to be able to make those decisions and yeah, I wasn't cool with it. So they had to identify another respite provider. So be that advocate, continue to be that advocate for the child who may not feel comfortable speaking up because I've never had a child and they're going into respite and they're like excited to go to a stranger's home. Usually they're like, oh, my gosh, do I have to? And so it, it's your job to create that level of comfort and safety so that this is not another um, traumatic event or situation for them. So that's a little bit about our vacation and about respite and our views on it. I guess my views, but John kind of agrees with me on this. <laughs> it's always important to be on the same page as the person you're fostering with. And I wanna hear from all of you. What have your experiences been around respite, whether you are a caseworker and you know what have you seen that's worked or didn't work, if you're a caregiver, if you're a former foster youth, or even current foster, uh, foster youth. Share what your experiences have been. Let's crowdsource information and share. Share your experience. This is what's beautiful about this community is that we're constantly constantly sharing and learning uh, through each other. Speaking of stories, please share your foster care related story. Again, caseworker, foster caregiver, primary parent, former foster youth, teacher, community member. I want your stories. I want to collect stories that are going to uplift and inspire others in this journey. This is something that I am so passionate about and I can't create it without your help. So there's a link in the description where you can go and you can share your foster care related stories. I want to compile this book and get it out there for people to learn and grow together. And while these stories are going to focus on positive outcomes and positive impact, it's not it's not because we're ignoring that the bad stories happen, the bad situations happen. Yes, they do. And if you wanna share a story like that, share it and then talk about what the impact was and what was possible. So yes, I went to respite and it was such a strange feeling and I didn't feel safe and I didn't feel comfortable. And this is what I would have liked to see. Like share what you wanted. Like if you're sharing a bad, a bad experience, something that really has hurt you, um, or something that you saw that didn't work. I'm so open to those stories as well. They are valid and share what could have been different so that we can learn and we can do better. So please, 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 please go to the link in the description and share your story and let's create change. And with that being said, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.